Hey, welcome back to Trucking California with Velox 18. Uh, this video started yesterday morning, all the way down in Southern California, down uh, at a Farmer Boys in Bloomington, California. And uh, it's gonna be a two-dayer again. I'm, I'm doing these weird loads that pick up and deliver at weird times, and so we're squishing footage together. That's just the way it's gonna be. And uh, that's just, I don't know. They're gonna be longer videos, I'm sorry, because I talk a lot, and because you should see how much I cut out of these videos, all right? It's, it's, it's unbelievable how much I cut out. So uh, hopefully they're a better quality video because I do cut out so much of the crap. But you guys missed some funny stuff. There was a couple funny parts of the last video that I had to cut out, and I was disappointed that I had to cut them out, but it just didn't it didn't make sense uh, to keep it when it was already a really long video. So uh, anyway, I'll try to get back to a more normal schedule, but uh, for now, let's pick up where this load, uh, not even this load, it's actually the load before this. We had to deliver our last stop of our uh, run from Nogales to Southern California, and then we picked up this load. All right, so that's that's where we start this video. But first, we gotta roll the music. All right, A wonderful Easter morning to all of you. out of this super secret location over here at the uh, Farmer Boys in Bloomington. And we're four and a half miles away from our uh, delivery. So, not a bad uh, place to spend the night. And uh, now it's a little after 3 o'clock, and we are rolling because we got a 3.30 appointment just down the road right here. All right, we just checked in at the gate over here, and uh, it is 3.30. So this is a um, this is a Walmart facility, but it's it's not like a typical Walmart. It's one that you know they like leased extra space or something. So it's like a hybrid lineage logistics slash Walmart. So it's like got the Walmart procedures, but it's it doesn't have the typical uh, style of a uh, of a Walmart distribution center. But uh, she's got two pallets of tomatoes for him, so hopefully it doesn't take too long. She's got to go drop the trailer in the door and then bobtail to the uh, office and uh, get checked in over there. All right, I uh, dropped my trailer in my door, went and checked in over here at the uh, at the office, and um, now I'm going to try and go back to sleep. Uh, I purposely didn't drink any caffeine this morning yet. Um, I I think because I took that little nap yesterday, I took like an hour nap yesterday and I just couldn't sleep very good. I had a hard time falling asleep. I laid down at nine and the last time I looked at the clock, it was like 10.40 or something like that. So I basically got like four hours sleep. So I, I think I'll be able to go back to sleep. Um, so that's the plan. I know that's really exciting. Sleep report. Sleep report. I know that's your guys' favorite part of the video. You get the sleep report. Um, but uh, shoot, two pallets of tomatoes. Let's see how long this takes. All right, we uh, just checked out over here at uh, Walmart in Riverside. That was my first time to that facility. Never been there before, but it is a. Uh, 520 so almost two hours for two pallets <laughs> kind of silly but you know not bad I actually wish it would have taken longer because I was just after like dropping the trailer and and checking in and doing all the paperwork and everything I was just kind of getting to the point where I was ready to go to sleep 
and then uh, like I was, I, I had just dozed off basically when they called. They called a little after five. And then you gotta go hook back up to your trailer and all that. So anyway, we're gonna go. Uh, we've got uh, 16 miles to go to get up to um, San Bernardino. Uh, it's weird. It's a it's a C H Robinson uh, warehouse, cold storage warehouse. It's called Robinson Fresh. So uh, I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know they were in the cold storage business, the warehousing business. But apparently they are, and that's where I'm going. So uh, we'll get over there, and uh, they open at 6 a.m. And uh, I have a 10 a.m. appointment, so I'll just go over there and see if I can get loaded early. It's Easter Sunday, so, you know, maybe they want to get me done early so they can go home. I don't know. We'll find out. All right, and here we are, parked on the side of the road. I thought this vacant lot we'd be able to park in, but they put up those K-rails to block it. So there's three trucks kind of in line. I think I'm just going to wait. It's uh, 540 right now. I think I'm going to wait the uh, the 15 minutes, 20 minutes until they open and then go try to check in and uh, kind of just see what happens because um, I don't really want to sleep out here on the road anyway. It's not really a good, good spot to uh, crash out. I mean, if I had to, I would, but I prefer to just get in there and get loaded early if I can so anyway we'll check in at 6 and 20 minutes and we'll see uh, see if they'll load me all right they opened up the gate at like 550 I pulled up here and they checked the guys in in front of me and then uh, I went and checked in and he said hey man I got you for a 10 a.m. appointment but you can go ahead and back into dock 10 and we'll get to you uh, when we can I'm like cool Sounds good to me. So we're gonna get in there and get into Doc 10. For those of you who watch Super Trucker Dan, and if you don't, you should, there's your train for the day. It's like my 17th train that I've had today. They just keep moving back and forth, but you get it while it's just chilling and sitting. So there's your train for the day. Here's another train for the day. This one's moving, passing up the one that stopped. Got all of them containers on there. That was over five minute long train. That's ridiculous. I'm gonna have to speed that up to like eight times, 10 times speed just to get through that. But I'm gonna show you guys the whole thing. You guys didn't even get to see the engine. Normally when they're that long, they have an engine in the back. But uh, maybe that one, they're just coasting it down the hill or something. I don't know, but that was crazy. Uh, we have a green light, so we're just waiting for a call for our paperwork and then we'll be out of here. All right. Got my paperwork, got my seal. We're just gonna pull out of the dock and uh, get it sealed up and get on our way. It's it's late. <laughs> that took a long time. <laughs> All right, let's seal this thing up. And it's not late, but it's after 12 noon. And the reason I said anything, I mean, I had a 10 a.m. appointment, but they started loading me at 7:30, and then. After 7.30, uh, they got done loading me at like 10. I always struggle to do this with one hand. Let's see if I can use leverage. Not just one hand, but my left hand. I suck. 
There we go. Use two hands. Got it on there. But anyway, uh, 10 a.m. appointment. They started loading me at 7.30. They got done a little after 10. And then it took them over two hours just to get me paperwork. So that's why it felt like, man, this is so much later than it should be. But it's really not. So anyway, we'll get the heck out of here. right here in uh, Pinion Hills because I saw Rica's Carnitas right here on the side of the road and I'm hungry so perfect. I was gonna go to Burger King over there in um, San Bernardino but the truck parking that used to be there isn't there anymore. They built a jack-in-the-box where we used to be able to park so I couldn't go there. But uh, this is gonna be good I can tell. Coming into uh, Mojave, and the sign back there said uh, high winds, high wind warning, uh, high loads not advised. Uh, so normally, if I was if I was light, I would definitely be hauling on the CB trying to get these guys to tell me how windy it is over here and make sure uh, I'm not going to lose anything. But I got 40 thousand pounds in the box this thing is anchored to the ground I mean it would take an act of God to blow this truck over uh, so I I'm feeling okay I'm feeling okay we're gonna keep on trucking keep on trucking we made it back here to the yard I decided that I have enough time to come back here to the yard and go and spend uh, Easter evening with my family and then we'll just leave uh, we'll leave at the time of day that I don't usually like to leave we're gonna leave like at 1 in the morning <laughs> 1 30 so, uh, so that's the plan right now I'm gonna go home and get some dinner uh, to be honest I forgot about you guys man I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I was driving back I drove uh, six and a half hours straight. Well, no, because I stopped for tacos. But after I made that stop, I didn't stop the rest of the way. I just pushed through all the way home. I held my pee all the way. I had to pee like a racehorse when I got here. But uh, I was talking to my mama on Easter, talking to my mom and dad, and uh, so I just forgot about you guys. I'm sorry you guys aren't as important as my mom and dad. Sorry. Mama comes first. Uh, all right, but I gotta go home and see my kid's mama and uh, see my, my wife, my number one, my ride or die, and uh, go see Gus, man. I gotta see Gus, I haven't seen Gus. I left out from the house last Tuesday. And uh, uh, yeah, Tuesday, and um, yeah, that was it, Tuesday. So, I guess it's only been five days, six days, but it feels like forever. <laughs> Sit down in your hair. It's very yummy. Mm-hmm. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Give it a try, buddy. 
Should I do that one piece off the fork? <laughs> That's a noodle. That's pasta. Mm. Bon appetit. Very good. Bon appetit. Very good. Okay, try it. Mmm, good job trying, bud. Whoa. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> good so job. Close. What's All right, uh, good morning, kind of. Uh, it's the middle of the night, but uh, we're gonna go and uh, get over to Sacramento. Actually, we're gonna start in Rockland and then go to Sacramento. So uh, that's the plan, but um, shoot, we're at the yard in the middle of the video. So I think it's time for the Metro. I, I, think, I think it is. But have I mentioned lately that you can go and get some merchandise if you're on an Android device, um, it should be down below the video uh, on the merchandise shelf. Should be Velox 18 uh, store down there. If you're on another device or a TV where you can't access the merchandise shelf right underneath the video, should be right there, right? Right underneath. Uh, but if, if you don't see that, then just go to Velox18.com and there's a, sh a button that takes you right, right to the shop. So. Uh, is the only button on the website. <laughs> it's literally a nothing website, just a button that will take you to the merchandise shop. So uh, there you go, bellox18.com. Uh, and with that, let's roll the Metro. Let's go. about the awesomeness that was uh, Gus at our uh, Easter Easter dinner so there's a uh, there's a number of things uh, like his his autism was uh, on full display last night uh, first off just being shirtless I can guarantee you uh, he probably spilled some water or some mud or something on his shirt and then insisted on taking off his shirt and running around without a shirt on. Um, he doesn't like the feeling of his shirt getting wet, <laughs> nor does he like the feeling of tags. If, you, uh, if he finds a tag, if he somehow has an article of clothing on and he missed the tag when they were, when they were putting it on, we could be in the middle of church. You better have some scissors with you because that kid is gonna start yelling, Mom, scissors, cut it. Mom, scissors, cut it. Scissors, cut it. Mom, cut it. Mom, cut it. <laughs> and he will not stop saying that until you cut that tag off. So that's one part. You see him shirtless. Uh, that's just a sensory issue. Um, a, a second thing that has to do with sensory issues is uh, his, uh, his blanket. You saw him holding his blanket. So, you know, just like many kids uh, who are, you know, in their young age, they, they have a something uh, to bring themselves comfort. Uh, usually kids, you know, you start seeing them grow out of it as toddlers. Some of them last a little bit longer and that kind of thing. Well, kids on the autism spectrum, because they have sensory issues, um, they, they find ways to bring themselves comfort. Gus uh, has um, his kiki, he calls it, his blanket, as well as uh, he, has, he has a hat that he kind of insists on wearing when he goes out into public or into, into situations that might be a little bit scary. I call it his bravery hat because to me it seems like he always wants to wear it when he needs to be brave. So uh, when he goes to church, when he goes to school, um, if we're going somewhere new, He'll bring uh, his kiki and his hat, his bravery hat. But uh, uh, anyway, but then um, as far as speech, uh, 
the what what we were having for dinner, which wasn't spaghetti and meatballs, it was spaghetti with like uh, this uh, this uh, kind of chicken uh, parm type thing uh, on on a bed of spaghetti. But he uh, he he's. Um, you know, developmentally, developmentally delayed. He's he's uh, behind on his. Uh, he has a speech delay. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. And so, a lot of times, the language he finds, the language he uses, is from uh, from movies or shows that he watches. And uh, and sometimes he'll get stuck in a loop like that where something has has brought something else to mind. Uh, brought a, a, a quote to mind and he can't he has to finish the quote he has to finish the scene in his head and sometimes he has to repeat it over and over again um, because he was he was working his way up to trying the spaghetti which is uh, another uh, thing with kids on the autism spectrum they uh, are extremely picky eaters uh, very very picky eaters uh, if they change the packaging on his favorite applesauce, he won't eat it. Uh, it it's just uh, part of uh, raising a child on the autism spectrum is that you have a challenge uh, uh, feeding them. Uh, and, and so nutrition is always a challenge. But uh, So he was working his way up to trying the, the spaghetti by do, going through that whole uh, movie scene uh, probably from some uh, uh, kids um, YouTube video about eating spaghetti and meatballs and so uh, we went through the whole thing and uh, God bless my wife she she always offers him uh, he rarely says yes this time he said okay when she said do you want some spaghetti and meatballs and he said okay and I said okay I, I want to see this uh, I want to record this because he started uh, he started doing his spaghetti and meatballs uh, lines. Uh, you missed the first like two or three times through that that he uh, he went through it. Uh, so I pulled out my phone and got that that part of it on camera, and then I got the part of it where he actually tried the food and uh, he put it in his mouth and they spit it out and said no thanks. But um, trying a new food is is a big deal. Is is a uh, that's an accomplishment in and of itself. So, anyway, that uh, that was a fun, fun little uh, Easter dinner last night with a shirtless Gus and uh, trying to eat his spaghetti and meatballs. So, I thought it was awesome. I thought it was funny. I wanted to share it with you guys. Gus is the star of the channel, so I I should include him in more videos uh, because he's the man, man. He's the reason I started this channel. So. Uh, so, uh, you know, got to get him front and center more often. But, uh, ooh, there's Smokey Bear hiding underneath this uh, overpass right here. See him in the dark right there? You see his, his door reflecting? Watch out. All right. Receiving department to go check in at trailer. Receiving check in arrow back here. All right. Looks like the docks are up here, but we gotta go back here to check in. Uh, it is. It is uh. 327 or 328 or something like that like we're right just barely right on time for our for our appointment so uh, yeah this I guess this is receiving check-in I think it is. All right, I'm gonna check it out. All right, 
glad we got checked in just in the nick of time and he told me uh, that they just had a fire alarm go off uh, so they are they are probably uh, not going to get to me for a while and he said find somewhere to park out of the way but kind of doesn't feel like there's too many places out of the way oh I can almost back into one of that spot or all right uh, we got ourselves a spot over here and uh I'll be honest it's really tight it's not tight like here so much like there's they made these spots kind of wide so they're not that difficult but it's really close up here to where you are like the spotter the yard goat just had to pull forward and back get back in like three times to get his trailer in and uh, you know he's in that little yard goat it's just really tight he almost hit his mirror on that reefer as he was spinning it in to uh, one of these slots over here so kind of silly hopefully we don't get hit and hopefully uh, we can get out of here when it's our turn um, I should be able to get out that way and, and then kind of like circle back around the other direction or maybe go out the exit and back around to the other side of the building I'm not sure but I'm gonna lay down and go to sleep because he told me it's gonna be a while because they had that whole fire fire uh, alarm thing but that's the plan as of now is get some get some rest get some Z's I'll uh, catch up with you guys once we get get in the door all right we are uh, unloaded and we came over here to Thunder Valley Casino. Uh, I heard they have truck parking over here, so I came over here to their their like uh, extra parking lot and um, parked next to a bunch of other trucks, which is cool. Um, I got a door. So I, I've been sleeping, so I got a door around five o'clock, and then they unloaded me by about um, seven thirty, and then I got out of there around eight. So now it's about eight thirty. I'm over here at Thunder Valley and I'm gonna go and try and get a, even some more sleep because uh, I might have a late night tonight. I don't know yet about the load for this evening, but if I do, I'm gonna be trucking late into the evening. So I'm gonna try and store up as much sleep as I can. I don't know if I'll be able to with the uh, with the uh, the sun out and all of that, but I gotta at least try. I still haven't drank any caffeine yet today because, uh, well, because I don't want to be awake. I want to be asleep. <laughs> but I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. All right, it's about 2.30. I made it down here to uh, Rayleigh's Distribution Center in uh, Sacramento. So it was just a 30 minute drive from where we were at, but uh, uh, I had to, uh, well, I was on the phone. I was on the phone, so uh, I was talking to Mr. Uh, Trucking for Race Cars up there in Washington. So me and him were talking and I've told you guys before, man, like real life people and relationships matter a lot more than me making videos. So sometimes when there's a, a gap in my video, it's because I was having like real human being interactions and not just talking to my phone. <laughs> I mean, I love you guys, but you guys aren't that important. No, you are. You are that important, but just on an individual basis, it matters a little more. You know what I mean? You catch my drift, you're picking up what I'm putting down, you smell it when I'm stepping in. All right, we just gotta wait for them to give us a call and give us a door. All right, it's 3.30. We got in a door already at our appointment time. How cool is that? And look at the puppy. Hey puppy, hey puppy. All right, let's see how long this takes. All right, man, we got out of there. Um, I was gonna record something there, but I'm kind of in a hurry to get to my next pickup. I've gotta get over here and get loaded with some, some plants. 
Uh, we're gonna get hand loaded and hand unloaded uh, plants. So this is gonna be uh, an interesting load, uh, but that's gonna be on tomorrow's video. Uh, the end of today's video, I just want to kind of run through the numbers for the week for you guys. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just kind of go for it. That that took like a couple hours, took a little bit longer than I hoped it would, but you know, that's truck driving. There was uh, a couple damaged cases, uh, a couple pallets that they had to restack. Uh, and so uh, some ricotta cheese got damaged in the process. And so uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so I, I'm kind of in a hurry, so that's why we're doing this while I'm driving. But to uh, give you the weekly rundown, so last week I didn't get a load on Monday. I got a tow new, uh, and then so I, if I'm counting from Monday, it's technically eight days because today's Monday. Uh, but if you're counting from Tuesday, the first day that I actually got myself a load, uh, then uh, I ended up with over uh, seven thousand. $700, over $7,700, and uh, I ran uh, over 2,100 miles, uh, and uh, so that comes out to about 366, 365 per mile on the rate per mile, so we, uh, I, I, I made the most of this week, I had a lot of sitting around, I only put about 50 hours in this week of actual, like, trucking and, and you know, like, on-duty time in the dock, uh, you know, doing stuff. There was a lot of sitting around uh, out in Arizona. There was a lot of sitting around at home on Monday and Tuesday. There was, it was, a, it was a weird week, but still was able to get uh, over 2,000 miles in for the, for the seven days. Uh, we worked through the weekend for, for Easter, uh, and uh, we were able to get loads uh, delivered today, and uh, the revenue was, was okay. Revenue is okay. Uh, 366 a mile would would be uh, would be pretty good, but I'd like to see more more revenue than that. Uh, that 7,700. So uh, yeah, so that's that's the the weekly breakdown, man. Uh, I still am am at about a dollar a mile on my fuel, uh, even with the 499 fuel that I got out in Arizona. Uh, basically, I spent about 2100 on fuel and I did over you know, 2150 uh, 2150 miles so just about a dollar a mile on fuel uh, man I think I think that's the update I think that's the the kind of the weekly review right there and so uh, now you guys will have to tune in to uh, the next episode of trucking California with Velox 18 love you guys peace out see you on the next load starting now